Hey, everybody. All right, everybody. Thanks for waiting there. Just had a couple things to get ready to here. It is noon on a Monday here. Very strange to be home, but uh, I'm looking forward to trying this out. Uh, for those of you just joining, uh, for those of you who don't know already, I, I did recently switch to doing this full time. So this stream is something that I, I, I used to do semi-regularly, and I really liked it. Uh, but I haven't had a lot of time recently to do it. Now I should have a lot more time to do it, and I want to do them pretty regularly. I'm hoping to do it like once a week or so. This is kind of a, a soft open. I did a test yesterday just to make sure that everything worked, and it seems to be working okay. I'm not really announcing this anywhere or pushing the stream you know, on social media or things like that. I just kind of want to see if everything is working and how it works out with actually making something on stream today. So that's what we're going to try and do. Uh, I see there's a question here. Give me a second. I do pay attention to the chat. Please do ask me any questions. I can see everything you write here. So if, you, if you're if you curious about something or you have a question about a tool or whatever, feel free to ask and I'll, I'll be happy to answer it if I can for you. Uh, what we're going to do today, we're going to make a variant of this. This is a basic, uh, this is a single-sided card wall. You see there's no cards on the back, which you would call a, a three-pocket card wall. And it's three pockets because there's two on the front. There's technically a third on the top where you can put, you know, bills and things like that. Um, these are something I've been meaning to add to the website for a while now, but I haven't had time to make any inventory to actually list on there. And uh, again, I, I find myself having time now to do so. I've been making a bunch of them, and I decided that um, I was going to do a double-sided version as well, with four slots, so just two on each side and no slot on the top there, because I find that um, even with putting a small amount of cards, even in this one, this top slot becomes a little tricky to use. It's there kind of not as a thing that you use all the time, but it's there if you need it. Whereas somebody who just didn't care about this and just wanted to fit more cards, a double-sided one would make more sense. That's what I started working on yesterday during my, my test session there. I'm doing it with orange and black Batero. So I did the I took the liberty yesterday during the test of doing all the boring stuff, cutting out all the little pieces and burnishing the edges and everything. So we're actually pretty much ready to put this together. We can basically just get right to it here. So how this is going to go together is going to be two interior layers of black Patero, which you don't see at all other than on the edges. Then there will be a layer on top, the V slot. And the curved slot on the outside. So the actual outside edges of the wallet are going to be orange, and the only black you'll see will be the thread, which is going to be black to match this. And the outsiders will be a stripe of black around the edge. Kind of how I did it on this one with, you can see the orange there. That's basically the same concept I'm going to do, but inverted on this one. Let me put this back to, uh, yeah, I'll keep it out here. That's a good example for All right. So give me a moment to gather my thoughts and try to remember where exactly I left off yesterday. That's a good question, Penny. I do find the round head works a lot better for me. In fact, thank you for reminding me. I might as well turn it on here. Penny's asking about the creasing head that I use. And I use a round head versus uh, what's more, what you'll see more commonly used, one of these. And I find that uh, the round head, I'm, I'm left-handed, so this is very particular with the, the direction you can use it. It has to be, you have to be basically holding it in your right hand to get the right angle to push it back and forth. And for a left-hander like me, it just doesn't work. Whereas this one, because it's the same shape all around, it doesn't matter which way you're holding it. So I started, I started using it for that reason purely because I was left-handed. Um, but I find that I, since I do a lot of things with tight curves and, and, and radii on them, this works great for working around those little curves and corners and things like that. So I just use this for everything. This is just my general purpose. I use, I use one creasing tip and that's it. That's pretty much the only thing that I use. It's kind of comical because I have, this is a, uh, this is a Mason CMDA Chong creaser that I got secondhand from a very, very 
dear friend, and I have every tip. I have every single tip for it, and I use only two of them. So it kind of makes me laugh every time I think of that. So let's see here. Let's try to trying to recall what I was doing here. So I think I actually have not made one like this before, so I kind of know in my head how I want to do it, but I haven't um haven't quite figured it all out yet. Also, uh, Boximus, thanks for the sub. It puts a little dinosaur up there. I need to do something more appropriate than that, but I guess dinosaurs are fine. There's nothing wrong with a little dino from time to time. So, these here, these look like card slots. These are actually th this top piece right here. That's what this is going to be, actually. This V slot is going to attach this. The other V slot here. And then if I'm right, I should be able I should be able to glue these in place, glue them to the backing, and then stitch them both on the bottom with just one just one stitch run. I shouldn't have to do them individually because I don't need to worry about hiding it on the inside and just punch through the whole thing. That'll make more sense when I get to it. Um, how long does it take to make an average wallet? It depends. Um, I find that one of these one of these guys I know I can do in about 90 minutes. Um, for a bifold wallet, if I'm really on it and I'm not screwing around and I don't make any dumb mistakes, I can make a bifold wallet from start to finish in about five to six hours. Uh, generally speaking, it takes me closer to, I spend a whole day on one is usually how it ends up working out, about seven to eight hours, just because to be on like that and to be really, really hustling to get it done in that period of time, it, it, it wears you out. It's, you would be surprised how much sitting on a bench in your house would, would make you tired, but it, uh, it does. So with that said, let's go ahead and get this taken care of here. Going to... I'm going to start with gluing these two pieces of black together. And you'll notice, I, I pointed this out yesterday on the stream, again, because these are just edge pieces, we're not showing any of this. We're only going to show it on the edge when it gets burnished. I've chosen two kind of ugly pieces of material. You can see there's some stretch marks. There's a big, ugly crease here. Uh, finding ways to use these parts of leather, things that are very soft, uh, is very efficient because it's less waste for you. These wouldn't be suitable for, you know, making a visible card slot, but for something where you just want, you know, the thickness of the stiffness and uh, just the color on the edge, it works great. What I'm going to do here real quick, I'm going to trim these to size just because i got to cut them out real quick. And then I'm going to I'm going to run them through the bell skiver. These are actually the only pieces that get skived on this wallet. It's just the interior edges. Nothing else needs to be skived on it. And I don't have a camera set up for that yet, but it'll only take me a second, so just bear with me here. I'm going to trim it around roughly, roughly about an eighth of an inch around the outside edge there. Then I'm going to take it over to the skyver. I'm only going to skive three out of the four edges. I'm going to leave the top uh, thick because I kind of want it to... Uh, it's one of the thinner parts of the wallet. Actually, wait a minute. No. Think about that. No, I'm going to skive all four edges. Normally, I wouldn't do that, but I'll do it on this one. So I'll be hold that thought real quick. It'll only take a second. I'm waiting on a new camera setup so that I can actually show this, but it didn't get here in time. So I figured, how oh, the hell it? We'll just go. I don't probably can't hear the bell skyver running. Just about done. Perfect. So for anybody on the fence about a bell skyver, uh, there's all eight edges of that taken care of. And I'm not taking too, too much off. I took it down to about, from about 0.8 millimeter to about half a millimeter, just to kind of get that edge a little slimmer there. But again, you can see right on, on both pieces there, there's the edges uh, taken care of. I need to sharpen my blade a little bit, but just for something that, again, you're not ever going to see except on the outside edge, that's perfectly acceptable. So to do this by hand, you certainly could, but 
I, I wouldn't have even finished the first one by the time we got done here. Hi, Katie. Good to see you. Hope everybody's doing well over there. We're going to get these glued together. I think I'm going to... Uh, I think I'm going to glue them finish side to finish side. Yeah. No. That's a dumb way of doing that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it flash side to flash side. My blades, I have, um, that's another, that's a really good question. My blades are disposable. So the only thing I really do to them is I'll hone them occasionally, which people laugh at me for, but it does make a difference if you're, if you're in the middle of a project. Uh, this is, uh, not the most efficient blade, but it's very comfortable in my hand. So I like it quite a bit. Clean out my glue jar there. I actually have a little glue pot that I normally use, but it's getting washed right now, so I'm using the plastic one. If I have any... Yo, know, you would have thought that in all that time I used for the lead-up, I would have got everything that I needed, but I forgot to get some wax paper. So I'm just going to do it right on the edge. If the camera's jostling a little bit, forgive me. I have it... Um, Again, I'm waiting on a new camera mount to get here, and it didn't come yet. So I actually have my the top-down camera is taped to one of my shop lamps. So if there's a little bit of movement on that, forgive me. I'm hoping that this is going to be the only stream where I have to use that setup. This is still very much a uh, a soft open. Kind of want to actually do some work and see how the stream works, and also get feedback on it. You know, if there's anything that uh, you think I I could you better explaining or anything you're curious to see, please do let me know. Would have liked to have done that over the wax paper so I didn't get on, on the workbench, but I forgot to get it. Glue these together. A little bit of messing with the glue. Again, it doesn't matter. None of this is going to be visible. All of this will be hidden on the inside. Wow. Hello to any new joiners. Uh, yes, you can expect more streams. As of today, uh, I am officially a full-time leather worker. A little sooner than I planned on being, but here we find ourselves. I had actually planned on going full-time at the end of this year, and I instead went full-time at the start of this year. So, so here we are. But I like streaming. I always did enjoy it. I used to do it on Twitch and on Instagram Live, which was less than ideal, but it was very convenient. So... I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how well it works out with with YouTube. I debated Twitch versus YouTube because I was familiar with Twitch. There's a lot of stuff to kind of relearn for streaming with YouTube, but I have um I have 6800 followers on YouTube and 80 followers on Twitch. So it was kind of a no-brainer which one I was going to go with. <laughs> which one I would get more reach from just just right from the bat. Uh I use a lot of different leathers. This leather that I'm using today, this is a uh, Butero from uh, Conceria Walpier in Italy. Uh, I know one of you said you were from Italy. Forgive my butchery of your beautiful language. I'm only half Italian. But um, this is a nice vegetable tanned leather. It's readily available in lots of different colors, and the colors are very bold. This is the orange and the black. These are both the same leather, just dyed different colors. Um, it's easy to work with. For the quality you get, it is relatively inexpensive. It's not cheap, but it is inexpensive compared to, say, alligator or, God forbid, shell cordovan or something ridiculous like that. To where you can make basic goods out of it, and you're not breaking your bank or your customer's bank. And it lasts very well. Uh, it burnishes beautifully. Everything about this leather is nice to work with. Um, there's, I, I really couldn't say a bad thing about it. So I kind of, for all of my made-to-order stuff, unless some, somebody orders something very specific, it's generally going to be made from this. So, we have this here. We're going to do... We're going to do some things here. I kind of... Give me a second, because I kind of have to rationalize my way through this again here. Um, I haven't made one of this exact type yet. I've only made the single-sided. Again, for anybody who came in late, we're making one of these, but with cards on both sides. There's, there are a couple things to figure out when you're doing something that has to line up on two different sides that you, can only, you can't see both sides at the same time. Uh, there's a couple tricks to get around that. What I'm trying to figure out is I want to make sure that when I glue these slots down, that I'm gluing them in the same place 
on each side. So that if I don't, I don't end up gluing one, you know, a millimeter or two higher on one side than the other, when I go to punch through it, I've pierced the top of my card slots. There's a way I, I get around doing that. Um, you'll notice that I have a good bit of extra margin here, about an eighth of an inch around the whole outside edge of the wallet. And we're going to use that to our advantage when we go to line things up here. I'll show you how we're going to do that. I'll try not to block it with my hand here. But first, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my scratch all, and I'm going to mark out where some things need to go. Outside perimeter. And we can be aggressive with this because, again, this all gets covered up by the orange. None of this black is going to be visible here. It is there, and I'm going to mark this up here. So we have there, with the scratch, you can kind of see my, my lines there marked. So we have everything lined up on this side. The question becomes, how do you line it up on this side where you can't see those marks? The way we're going to do that, you'll notice that uh, on this card holder here, the edges of this are rounded. We're going to use that to our advantage in that we can take we can take the corners of this and just flip them off. So I'll show you I'll show you what I mean here. So I'm going to take I'm going to take the top corners because I get trimmed for topmost corners off just like that. You see those little notches there? When I flip this over, I know now these notches are at the exact. You can just barely see the line there of where my scratch all marked. I know now that when I flip this over and I can't see those scratch all lines anymore, I know that in where these two pieces meet are the exact top corners of where the other side of the wall it needs to be. So I know now that as long as I put this and line this up here, I line that corner up with that, and that corner up there, you can see it perfectly there. I know now that this is perfectly aligned. So any line I make here, any line for this stitch line, or where this card slot goes, these are going to line up with the other side. And then it doesn't matter at the end because when I go to finish the wallet, when I round the corners off, even if I've come in a little, you know, a hair too far and I leave a little nick there, it all gets cut away at the end anyway. So same thing with these scratch all lines. You know, if I were doing them on the on the finished surface, they would all get trimmed away at the end anyway. So now I have our frame of reference for where things need to go on both sides. When I look at this now, I'll try to show you there. Kind of see them there. You can see my at the at the bottom there on your screen. You can see those are the lines where the card slots go. Again, corresponding on this side. They're in the same spot. Uh, Christian stingray leather is something I, I've I've looked at, and I know I have enough friends who have messed with it to give me the impression that it really isn't something I personally want to do. Um, if it is something you're looking at, uh, I can I can definitely recommend you uh, a good individual who who does work with it and knows what she's doing. She's one of the best. But for me, I, I kind of stick to I, I like alligator. Uh, alligator and lizard are really the only two exotics I have interest in working with right now. Ostrich, I've looked at it, and it just does nothing for me. You know? <laughs> How I started my business, it was kind of an accident. I. Uh, I was moving into this house with my uh, my wife at the time, my girlfriend, and we were looking to furnish it. And she found these um, these kind of neat looking wall hangers that were made of leather uh, from CB2. And I looked at them and I thought, oh, that's kind of expensive. I didn't like the way they were, they were made. I thought I could do better for less. So I, upon her recommendation, I, I bought my first piece of leather and I made the things that we had seen on their website. And I found I had a lot left over and that I had enjoyed doing it. And I stuck with it from there, and by the end of that year, I had, uh, I didn't expect to, but I had established a business online, I was selling things fairly, fairly regularly, so that was kind of a, a surprise to me. This is not something I, I ever planned or expected to do, it just kind of happened, and um, meeting people online on, on Reddit, and, you know, being part of founding the, the Leathercrafting Discord, uh, was definitely the most rewarding part of it. It's fantastic to have actually get to meet people and become part of a a group of people who share a like interest and are very good at it. Oil Boss, the Joker's wallet will never happen. And as your punishment, you're now a stream moderator. 
Enjoy. <laughs> so, I'll show you what I'm doing here in a second. For large surfaces that need to be scuffed, I keep a piece of 180 grit uh, sandpaper that I took home from work, which is now closed. I used to be an auto painter. Um, now I am not anymore. I did that for almost 20 years, and I closed my business last month. So I have a lot of things left over from that lifestyle that kind of translate to this. So for large surfaces like this that need scuffed, I usually use my scratch all to do that. But for something like this where I just need a lot of surface taken down quickly, I just use the sandpaper. Most of my clients are from the, from the U.S. and the, a large part of my orders are custom orders using alligator. And there are, there are complications with shipping alligator overseas. So... You can you can do it, but it's kind of a pain, and it's very expensive to do it legally. So, as a result, almost all of my customers are, are United States-based. I'll show you what this is for in just a second here. I'm taking that down. This is actually for, I'm scuffing the surface back here. So I can glue this down. That's where I want to put this. And actually, now that I think about it, I'm looking at the way this went together, I don't even, for future reference, I don't even need to come down this far. I could have just stopped there. I might trim that down a bit. Things you learn as you're putting stuff together. Flip it over, sand the other side. Again, as a reminder, if anybody just joined, I, I am still, I am figuring out how to put this together as I do it. I have not made one of these before, so... <laughs> The odds of me doing something dumb, making a dumb mistake, are pretty high right now. Let's see what, let's see what happens. That's good enough to glue on. I don't really need to be too particular about cleaning that off. Take a look real quick. Doing some test fitting. Taking a moment and doing some test fitting is uh, never a bad idea. It is almost always rewarded. I think I am going to... I think I am going to keep this extended down full length. Because that way I'll know that even if, um, even if it's more than I need there, I'll know that it's stitched down. So even... It'll be stitched down across the top, and it'll be stitched down on the bottom down here, too. So that'll be very, very secure on the inside. It'll have a nice, dense feeling to it. It won't be thick. It'll still only be about an eighth of an inch thick at the edge, but it'll feel nice and dense. <laughs> Oil Boss, I'm, I'm flattered. I, I'm glad that your uncle liked it. <laughs> of course, of course, it's a walking out wallet. <laughs> One thing I am going to do real quick, I am going to take these two pieces over to the Bell Sky real quick, so I'll be right back. Again, this only takes a second, and again, I haven't got a camera set up for this yet, but it's coming. And again, once again, anybody on the edge of buying a Bell Skyver, that's all it took to do, just these two pieces here, so... It is a, for production work, it is a, it is a must. Again. Okay, let's go ahead. Let me just double check it. Again, I'm using, using all the guidelines I scratched out on this earlier. Just double checking to make sure that everything looks right. Yeah, more, more or less that looks looks correct to me. One thing I am going to do, even though I scuffed in here, I am going to go around the outside edge of this with the scratch all properly scuff this up because I really want to make sure that my glue holds at these edges. All of this in here is, eh, it'll be fine. 
it's going to be held down just by tension, but I want to make sure that the edges, at least, are very, very secure. Um, if you want one, I will actually, these will be available for sale soon. Not yet, but we're getting there. Uh, I have to make a few of them so I can take pictures of them before I list them on the website. I'm hoping to have these available for sale at around $100 uh, at the end of this month. That's what I'm going to do. Challenges facing with the supplier. My supplier is actually based in the United States, and they go through the trouble of importing it from Italy. Um, apparently, it is quite a pain to order this leather from this tannery because you have to order a huge amount of it to be able to get them to even sell it to you. It's very frustrating. But in general, I don't really have too many challenges. In, um, here in the States, we were pretty fortunate to have a lot of different places that are carrying leather, and that the number of places doing it continues to grow every year. I started six years ago, and when I started, the old, the old timers will laugh at me. But, uh, it was kind of dry. You had some old standby options. You were kind of limited. And in just a few years, the number of choices that were available grew exponentially, largely just because of people becoming interested in the hobby, which is why I always encourage people to pick it up, because the more people doing it, the more supplies there are, and it just becomes better for everybody. Here. I'm on the fence as to whether I should have cut that down. I but I'm committed now, so take the glass slicker, push it down. But in general, um, there are not a lot of challenges to getting getting material, at least here in the United States. See, now, get, going to Italy and actually doing that is something I want to do, but I, I, was, I couldn't even leave my state before. Uh, just because owning a, it was a, what we had was a family business, and we painted cars. There was a there was never a chance to get away, even for a weekend to go do something. So the idea of going to Italy always seemed like a pipe dream. Um, now I have the time. I just need to. I just need to make the money to be able to do it. So we'll see how it goes here. I'm I'm optimistic. I'm looking forward to it. There's a lot of places I want to go visit. In particular, I want to visit uh, London. I have a, quite a few good friends there who've been waiting for me to come see them. London, Italy, Japan, especially Japan is a is a great place as a leather worker to go visit. So I'm uh. I'm optimistic that I, I will get to uh, fulfill these dreams that I've had for a while that I have been unable to. Owning a small business is a blessing and a curse. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't undo anything that I did, but I'm glad I'm not doing it anymore. If I were to visit Italy, what's the first meal I would eat? Uh, definitely McDonald's. McDonald's Chicken McNuggets, without a doubt. Get yourself a 20-piece. Oh, yeah. That's what's good. <laughs> I like turned edges. They're very beautiful, and they're very difficult to do. There's a fella, Martin Carswell, in Australia, does beautiful turned edges on, on his products. Yes, if you're making coffee, absolutely. That was my wife, Beatrice, asking if I wanted coffee. The answer, of course, is yes. Okay, so that's looking pretty smart. So, let me close up my glue here. So I'll show you what we have here. My dad is calling me. <laughs> He'll have to wait. If he calls again, I'm going to have to answer it. So, hold that thought. We'll see what he does. <laughs> All right, so where was I? So what I've done here... Again, this black is just liner and color for the edge. None of it's going to be visible. What this piece here is, is this piece across the top. What we're going to add to it is the first top card slot, which is going to stitch down there. It's going to be one on each side. I should be able to punch through and get both of them with one stitch run, just like this. But what I'm going to do when you're punching through anything this this thick actually isn't that thick. I'm going to. Uh, nah, I don't think I will. I don't think I'm going to bother Scott. I think I'm just going to glue it as it is.
Before we glue anything, we're going to want to make sure that we go in and scuff the edges to prepare for the glue to hold. You can only buy nine? Why can you only buy nine? Nine is such a bizarre number for that. At least ten. Ten is even. That's a shame. That ain't right. That's not right. Where uh, in Italy are you? If you don't mind my asking. My family is originally from Naples. They moved here towards the turn of the century, so we have a lot of we have a lot of very American Italian heritage. <laughs> but we do the seven fish dinner for, for Christmas. So always a hit. Big fan of that. And done a quick scuff there. We're gonna glue this down real quick. Oh, wonderful, beautiful country. I, it's funny that you say that. I used to overlap them a little bit. I don't anymore, um, because I didn't like. I didn't like the step. I like the flush appearance of having them be just the T slots now. I've gone back and forth on how I choose to do them. My older wallets from 2020 all had overlapping uh, slots, and from that point on, I stopped doing that just because I think this looks cleaner. I like being able to look at the edge and no, no visible steps, no bumps, nothing like that. It's all just one clean edge. And as long as you're using the right thickness of leather and you're not puncturing it in the wrong places, it's pretty strong for most purposes. You would really have to, you would have to try to break that. If you try to break anything, you can, but in general use, you shouldn't have a problem with that. And up there. I'm using uh, the Sewa water-based glue. This is not a uh, this is not a contact glue. This is just a regular PVA glue. And I like that because it lets me. I have a little bit more working time with it. I can really kind of work it down, press it down there. A little bit of. Bit of an edge there that I don't like, and I want to... <laughs> must have picked a thinner spot on the leather there. Oh well. Funny, I uh, as I'm talking about the McDonald's ten piece, I get an I get an advertisement from McDonald's on my a push notification on my phone for McDonald's. Uh, oh yeah, this glue dries fantastic, yeah. And it has a little bit of flex to it, so it makes it ideal for wallets. It, uh, it is my go-to glue. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to... Before I glue this slot, I'm going to... I'm going to punch the holes for this one real quick, just to make sure I kind of got it lined up properly here. I'm curious to see how much noise this makes. I haven't actually hammered anything on the stream yet. I'm hoping that my camera doesn't fall. So let's see what happens here. I think I definitely should have cut shorter than I did, but lessons learned. Checking to see. Yep, everything lined up just the way I wanted it to. Good to. I know now that if I go and glue this on here and I punch through that, it's going to be where I want it. So all of my all of my guidelines were correct. Yeah, the Tandy glues. Um, I think is it the Eco Stick that I think people uh will use that they seem to to hold in in decent regard. I think Eco Stick is a good one to use. Oh, that's good to know, Penny. Thank you. I'm glad that it wasn't uh a problem. I was really worried about how bad that was going to be with the microphone. But yeah, this um, this Sable glue I, I highly recommend. I use this and I have the uh, the uh, the Aqualame. I think it's 315. Yeah, the Aqualame 315. I use that for things that this glue doesn't respond well to. So this glue works extremely well for most vegetable tan leathers. Chrome tan leathers like uh, Chev and, and Safiano, it struggles with. Uh, it does not want to bond too well, not without excessive uh, excessive clamping and, and dry time. Versus to where 
usually within 60 seconds you're you're done with this on veg tan um so for th for leathers like that i use the uh the contact glue which is still again it's also water based So, you don't need to hold it very long. Just work the edges down. Work the edges of the card slots down with a glass slicker. We're going to let that sit for just a second. And just to be safe, you really don't need to. I'm going to clamp these two edges anyway. Just let that sit for a hot second. Probably don't have to do that, but better to be safe. That sit there. Clamping on the leather directly like this doesn't really matter. If you look closely, it does leave some marks, but if you remember, if you think about how this is going to go together, any marks it leaves are directly where you're going to be punching holes for the stitches. So any any little bruise marks or things like that, they get obliterated the moment you punch your stitch holes, and you never see them. So I think uh, people people make a big fuss about that, and you really, in most cases, don't have to. Good. Did not try to call me back. That should be good by now. We're going to go back through the other side. This definitely ended up thicker than I wanted it to, but it'll be okay. So there we go. A little hard to spot there, but that worked out. Nicely. I'm happy with that. Even though I don't really have to, out of habit, I'm going to hammer these stitches down. The reason I do that, it matters a lot more when the stitches are visible, but it's good practice to do anyway. You'll notice that it closed those holes down a lot. They were very, because they had to punch through almost an eighth of an inch of leather, they were pretty wide where the, the tines went through. If you hammer it before and after you stitch, you close those up a lot and you get a tighter stitch from that. See. Yeah, I, I just have a basic uh, noise gate filter on here, and I didn't bother editing it at all. So I kind of figured I would have to play around with that a little bit, but that's what that's why this is a soft open. Thank you. Oh, thank you, darling. <laughs> she is watching. Thank you, dear. Be a little careful with that around here. <laughs> so let me get thread, and I have to think about how I want to do the camera for stitching. Because again, I had hoped to have a better uh, camera mount than I do right now. Let's see what happens. You think about taking another sip of coffee. So this is. I have a thing for coffee mugs, and um, this is from a company called Kinto, K-I-N-T-O, and it is um, it is an it is from their uh, Amber or uh, what the hell's the name of the collection? That's ah, uh, company. Hold on, it's not. It escaped me. But Kinto, Kinto.com is where I got these from, and it is it is just. A beautiful 1970s style uh, coffee mug. Just a, a treat. And what amazed me is it is incredibly delicate. It is so light. Like it's not even in your hand. It is, it is just beautiful. <sighs> All right. I think that'll be fun. 
I shouldn't hit that. I probably probably won't hit it. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, mixing materials is one of the the most fun parts of doing it. I do it more for an aesthetic means, and less so for um, less so for functionality. I I usually when it comes to functional stuff, I'm building it all out of one material. Um, a long time ago, I did do my very early waltz, I did do lambskin on the inside as a liner, and that was very neat. I wish I had one of those around to show you, but I, I gave them all away. So that was fun to have the billfold line and very soft. It was actually perforated lambskin, so it looked like a car interior. That was neat. Um, but I like mixing materials more for texture, more for visual texture than for hand texture. I like, uh, I like mixing that up quite a bit. I think that's one of the most rewarding ways of doing it. Working with the color is nice. If you can work with texture and color, it really it really elevates the quality of the final product if if you're good at doing that. Ah, forgive me, I didn't realize how much I needed that cup of coffee. All right, let me get some thread here. This is a big old spool of Venomo number eight MBT. My good friend Cornell decided he didn't like it anymore. Right around the time that I decided I did like it, so I bought all of his from him. I have a good couple cones from that. Then I liked it so much. A very dear friend in Korea facilitated the purchase of one of every color from Venomo, direct from Korea, and they had it sent to me. I have one of every Venomo color. I find it to be, uh, people make a big deal about, oh, this thread's better than that thread. Oh, it's, this is the one. And I feel like people change thread as often as they change shoes. I just don't see the fuss. I can thread the needle on camera. Probably won't show it. But it might. quarter to one, that means probably, not guaranteed, but possibly get visited by a cat soon. See what happens. It is good to have doubles. Triples the safest. You've got doubles of the black, the brown. No, triples of the black. Triples is best. Triples is best. This will be weird for a second. Um, I'm going to adjust the camera and see if I can get it to show Stitching Pony. This may break the camera. Let's see what happens. Let's, let's just see. Let's see what happens. Oh, that, oh, oh, I was not happy about that. That's, that'll do. That's not bad. That worked pretty good, actually. Okay. I built this stitching pony uh, about a month into when I started, just out of scrap lumber in our uh, in our garage. And it's very, very basic. It, um, it just has a carriage bolt and a wing nut on the side. And most people kind of look at that in horror because it does catch the thread from time to time. But I kind of, I just kind of learned to dance around it. So my stitching dance kind of keeps it, uh, for the most part, off of that. And that's, um, you're definitely right about that, Penny. There are colors that sell and colors that are fun, and I like to do both. Um, because I think the browns and blacks are very beautiful, uh, and they offer more creativity than you'd think. I feel sometimes like, um, bold color choices, it, um, you walk a fine line between being visually interesting and trying too hard. And it's very easy to just try to, you know, try too hard and make something that is just gaudy and not uh, not appealing. And I think a lot of people fall into that trap early on where they're trying to kind of find find their own visual style and they're trying to stand out from the crowd. 
trying to stand out from the browns and the blacks and everything else that you know people are, are making and i think you just you have to just try it and see what you end up liking One thing I've come to find is that eventually everything is sellable to someone. Every wild color combination, somebody out there will appreciate. It's just that some have more people appreciating them than others. <laughs> I think I definitely misjudged how thick this was going to be in the center. I shouldn't have... I'm seeing now I shouldn't have run that top piece all the way down to the bottom. Should have I should have cut it short, but lessons learned. I think it'll still be fine. It's just going to be a little bulkier on the center than I want. I'm not used to uh, having to stitch through something so thick there. I'm going to have just barely enough thread. Yes, I do. Hey, thanks for the subscription, Matt. Oh, yeah. Oh, I pulled a, flew a little too close to the sun. Pulled my needle right off the thread. But yeah, Kelp, I've always dropped my needles. And I also... I also stitch away from myself, which seems to be anathema to what most people do. I'm going to have just almost exactly enough to finish the back stitch on this. <laughs> Judge that a little nicer than I would have liked. So to finish that back stitch, I didn't know you did that. Oh, it's like we're brothers. Gonna take a little bit of glue. Some glue on the, uh, the inside edge of the thread. Pull it tight. Tip it off. I'm gonna have to do this quickly so I'm not gonna be able to adjust the camera here. But while the glue is drying, before the glue sets, Take your hammer, beat the devil out of it. And that way you actually hammer that hole closed around the glue, and it holds it in place very, very tightly. Turn the camera back down again. That worked out okay. Penny, that's pretty much what happened with me. I, uh... I spent a night just stitching, just doing different ways of stitching until I found one that worked in both both directions and looked right, and I've just never changed from that. And this is just kind of how I ended up doing it. The saddle stitch is remarkable in that there are so many different ways of accomplishing the same thing. And while there are ways that are wrong definitively, there are also many ways that are definitively right. And it's very, it's very strange that there's such a... Um, a form of art that does that, that is, is different for every person, almost. Alcantara is not something I'm familiar with. I know of it, but I've never used it myself, so I can't comment on that. I like to, um, I generally stick with, uh, you know, goatskin from Alran and, and that kind of stuff. I find that works. I find that I like working with it. It works very well for what I do, and it holds up well, too. Gone ahead and done that. So now we have our first card slots, and it looks like the edges here, those lined up more or less perfectly on the edges. I know that when I punch holes through this on this edge here, the top here is going to be the same as the top here, which is very good. Happy about that. Again, it ended up being thicker than I wanted, 
but for a prototype, it's it'll have to do. It'll still be nice when it's done. No, I shouldn't I shouldn't speak too soon. There's plenty of room to, to screw it up yet. Let's see. <laughs> Let's just see what happens. The next thing I have to do is glue the outer two card slots on there. These are pretty much ready to go. I've got these all burnished on the back. I burnished a little too close to the edge on the back side, so I just want to scuff that up to get a good glue bond there. What I'm going to do now is, again, I can see from my margin lines there, I know where I have to, to glue this. So I'm going to take my scratch all, scuff around that edge there, scratch that up nice. Give a nice rough surface for the edge of the card slots to bond to. Really need a new scratch all. This is still just the original Tandy craft tool scratch all. And it's supposed to be about an inch longer, but I've uh I've ground it down so much from sharpening it because I use it for this more than anything else. Really need a new one. Fortunately I have little tiny hands, so it doesn't bother me too much. Same thing for the other side. This is an unglamorous part of leatherworking, but it is very, very important. Hello, Emma. Um, I, I have seen them, and I actually had, uh, to answer your question, Penny, I had one that was made from an old soldering iron, and that was my first electric creaser, and it worked okay. It was not. It was certainly better than no creaser. And I think even for as flawed as it was, I I would say that it was better than a manual you know, alcohol burner creaser as well. And that um, you didn't need to worry about the burner, you didn't need to worry about, you know, heating it all the time. It just did that on its own, even if it was a little, even if it did run a little hot, it still worked. Very funny, Anne. coffee. My wife and I drink a lot of coffee. And um, when I was working each day you know, at, at the paint shop, we had a coffee subscription, our favorite one that we would uh, get on about every three weeks we'd get. And with me being home now, we've come to discover that I drink a lot of coffee. And we've, for the past couple of weeks, we've run out of coffee altogether. And we keep thinking, well, we could go, we could go get some, but it's going to come in like a day or so. It's going to get here like tomorrow. And then, of course, a day goes by and it's not here yet. So we were kind of slumming it on instant coffee for like a week straight. But to get back to actual nice coffee is, uh, is really a joy. Thank you. I was, um, I was asked about it earlier. You can kind of see it now. This is from Kinto.com. The um, ah, Sepia. Sepia is the name of the collection that these are from. But they've got this really beautiful 1970s kind of amber style to them. They have these nice little... Uh, saucers that go with them. Ah, Lord, that's good. I want a refill, but I shouldn't. I ran into this problem yesterday where I had a little bit of too much coffee that caused problems. Hello, Rushton. Rushton, while you're here, I have to show you. Got some leather from my good friend Rushton, and this was the box he sent it in. So thank you, fellow Haas. Your cherished, cherished presence. <laughs> so for any new joiners, uh, Forgive me if I haven't gone through this already. What we're making today, and it says on the bottom now, which is kind of nice, uh, we're making a double-sided card holder. This is a new new pattern for me based on a very familiar pattern. But as you've seen, if those of you who are here, there's still been a couple surprises with it. So we've got to the point now where we have most of the parts together. We have the internal slots glued and stitched on, and we're ready to put the outside final slots on. Uh, then get to trimming it and stitching it. So we're pretty close to actually having a, uh, a wallet here. One thing we're going to do, 
this is a good tip when you're assembling wallets. So anytime you're laying cards, card slots on top of another one, it helps if you put a card inside the card slot below it. So we're going to put one in there, then we're going to glue our outer card slot over top of this with the card in it. And doing that, you get a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra space inside here. That makes it makes it nicer to use the wallet over time. Eco leather is an interesting question. It's something I'm I'm following. I would say keenly. Uh, there's a couple promising, well, promising options for it: mushroom-based leathers, things like that. Uh, the the problem with eco leather and with quote unquote vegan leather is that, to the best of my understanding, right now all vegan leather is at least partially plastic which kind of is the antithesis of, uh, of sustainability. Um, almost all of them, and even the mushroom-based ones, uh, some of them are up to like 50% plastic. Um, so it's questionable how far that's going to go. They also, um, there's one called Milo, M-Y-L-O, which I kind of get into some fights with on Instagram, because they, they, keep say, they keep touting how sustainable they are and how they care so much about the environment, but they only sell to like big luxury houses, like the people who are, who are causing, you know, certainly more harm than I think I am here in my little shop. And those are the only people they'll give it to. They, you can't even buy it from them. I can't go and say, please sell me your product. I'm not asking for it free. I want to buy it from you. And they say, nope, you're not, you're not big enough for us. We don't do that. So I think that's kind of, I think that's kind of frustrating. Um, there are some cork options that are interesting, but they don't last, from what I've come to understand. So, it is definitely something I want to pursue in the future, but at the time, there aren't many good options available for it. When there's a good one, I'll be happy to use it, but right now, as far as I know, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you know something I don't, I don't know of any that are any good right now. But it is definitely worth following. And that's a, a very good question to ask. With that, said let's get back to business and anderson you know we don't talk about chrysler products in this house this is a ford house although ricardo montalban is a great man give him respect for that but it's a sh just a shame it was a chrysler product he was advertising so you notice i use a lot of glue i'm not going to use this much glue here i'm going to take this and spread it around here but I like to use a fair bit of glue doing this. Oh. No. Hang on one second. Okay. All righty. Go in here. Try to get that spread out more or less evenly. I have to get used to working more in the center of the bench. They usually work very close to me. Remember the not where the camera is right now. Yeah, that's the big problem with cork. It just doesn't seem to hold up. I am so. Anytime you're gluing against tension like this, you're going to want to some kind of clamp. Hold it in place here. And again, like I talked about earlier, don't worry. Don't stress too much about leaving marks on the leather. Anywhere that you're clamping is going to get obliterated by a stitch line anyway. So I'm going to set these clamps. And I'm going to step away for a hot second to refill my drink. I'll be back in about a minute's time. So we've got that set down there. So I will be right back. Give me about a minute, two minutes, and we'll we'll get right back to it here.
All right. We're back. So by now... Oh. So now we're, uh, this glue should be dry by now. And again, you can see a couple little marks from the clamps there. Again, none of that matters in the end. All of that gets hit by the stitches. Out. Looks. Russian, I'm just a glue guy. I just like using glue. It's just, it's, I, I like it. <laughs> My Italian surname is actually not my surname. My surname is Serbian, actually. My mother was Italian, and my father was, was Serbian. So, in a very American sense, I'm half Italian and half Serb. <laughs> I'm all from the... I get, both, I get both seas. I get the Mediterranean and the Adriatic. I get the best of both. But, um... You know, I picked my name, the name of my leather company, almost as a joke, before I even really knew how to make anything. Kind of a, uh... Uh, like, oh, wouldn't this be funny if this was a thing? Then six years later, here we find ourselves. But really, we're, I would tell you where I'm from, but I don't know. I never learned that from, from our Serbian side of our family. But uh, we celebrate all the Orthodox holidays still. I do Orthodox Christmas, Orthodox Easter. I, I cook lamb for them, so. We actually have here in Northeast Ohio, we have a very large Serbian and Croatian population. So at any given Sunday in spring and summer, one of the Orthodox churches is doing a lamb roast. You can just pick anyone you want and go get it. It's fantastic. Ah. My Serbian, <clears throat> Serbian last name is uh, Maudush. That, we're going to go back. <laughs> I didn't expect it either. You learn something new every day. Basically going to repeat for the other side what we did for this side. I think what I'm going to do here today, I think I'm going to get this glued and put together. And I'm going to call it a day here because my throat's starting to get a little dry. I haven't talked this much in a long time. So I have to get used to doing it again. Yeah. A loud talker. I can't moderate my voice, so I'm always half shouting when I'm talking here. That takes its toll, so I think I'll probably take a break here after I get this glued up here. But I'd say this was a pretty successful kind of soft test here. I'd be curious to have any feedback that you had on the stream. Anything you'd like to see? Anything? If problems with audio? Did you have problems with video? Things like that. What did you think? I would love to have your opinions on it. Please tell me so I can improve it. And then the next one I do... I want, you know, I'll actually be advertising it here on, you know, my Instagram and things like that. And we'll, we'll do something big with that. But I'm pretty happy with how this uh, kind of soft test went. And I thank you all for joining me today. I'm, I'm hoping to do this more often. I don't have a specific schedule in mind yet. Um, I realize that, you know, me working from home, I know that Many other people who would, who would normally follow me here, you know, Eastern Standard Time, are probably at work, unless they're also working from home. So I was kind of, I've, I've been thinking about doing it Mondays at noon, Eastern Time. That kind of works for me. I don't know if that works for anyone else. Um, yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts on when you think, when would a stream be good for you? When, when would you, if this is something you'd like to see more often, I'd love to know when would be a good time for you to do that, so... Edge paint seems to last better than burnishes. Uh, I have a fantastic double layer belt that was made by a very dear friend of mine. And around the buckle area where you get a lot of wear, yes, it does It does wear a burnish down. Um, that said, even edge paint will eventually wear down. Uh, all abrasion wears through at some point. Abrasion always wins. Um, the general consensus seems to be that edge paint resists that better than a burnish. Um, but there is no, there's nothing to last forever, even with leather. Yeah, none of the cats showed up. I'm surprised. They'll, um, they're here. I think they'll show up soon. It's getting on one o'clock. They get fed around two, so. Ah. 
waiting on glue to dry. Oh, thank you, Roger. I'm I'm glad to, I'm glad you enjoyed it. There's there's not a lot to talk about while you're doing this, so. This is definitely um. This is it. It is not even the same world. Streaming from a desktop versus streaming from a, like a phone using Instagram. It is fantastic. It is so much better doing it with a desktop. I, I'm so glad to have this set up now. Yeah, I would not have guessed with uh with you know that is that is very international. You're correct. <laughs> Yeah, my dad's Serbian name is uh, Duchamp. I know very, very little about uh, about that side of the family, just because they really didn't talk too much about it. So we have some records of that. I know a lot more about the Italian side of my family than my Serbian side. But all of it plays a part. I'm going to give this another, another 30 seconds or so, and then we should be good to take the clamps off of that. And then what we'll do... We'll trim this to shape. I think that's probably where I'll, where I'll leave it off. I'll, I'll take the cards out, trim it to shape, cut the corners on it, and then maybe uh, maybe later we'll pick up and do the, the holes on it. But um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you can follow me, Dreadnought Leather. Uh, I'll post pictures of this at, when, I, when I'm done with it. And then, like I said, uh, these this is something I'm working on adding for on a made-to-order basis, so you will be able to order these eventually from the website. They're not ready yet because I haven't made any yet. I have to take pictures of them first. So I'll be doing a couple of these. I'll probably do another streams like this where I'm working on uh, just inventory stuff like this. And then I have some very interesting commissions coming up. In fact, I'll show you that while we're waiting. Let me grab this. Hold on. Have a it's a little hard to tell from the the camera kind of washes it out, but this is a pastel green glazed uh, Alex Alex almost said Alexander the green Alexander from uh, American Tanning. And I'm going to be doing a uh, bifold with this paired with a bright pink interior. So I'm really excited to get to do this one. I'm just waiting on the material to get here. That one is going to be kind of intense. I might stream that. I don't know yet. We'll see what happens. If I have anything else interesting here. This, this alligator was called Alex. Back up. I don't think you can see behind me there. I have all my alligator up on a rack. Anything else interesting up here? No, I don't think so. All right. Generally, lining all alligator, it's almost always being used with uh, goat skin. Occasionally, it'll be something like Minerva box, but almost always goat skin, and that's what it will be for that one as well. It was a little tricky to pull these out. You kind of have to be careful when you're pulling the, the cards out while it's just glued because you can you can lift them off. That's away. A little bit here, make some room. So this is always the frightening part. That worked. I think that's gonna be okay. It's a little thick. Uh Neither, uh, Roger. I'd go down to about half a millimeter for goat. So, 0.5 millimeter for goat. And doing card slots out of that, I'll double it up. I'll, I'll fold it in half at the top so you get roughly a millimeter thick. And you have a finish on, on both sides there. You don't really need to do that. I like to, just because I think if you're gonna, if you're going to pay for the kind of walnuts I make, you should you should get something special from it, so. All right. I'm going to try to show this best I can on the stream here. Let's, uh, let's just see what happens. I'm going to trim this now. I'll show you what we got here. You can kind of see we have the rough 
shape of it there. You can kind of see all my excess there. There's the uh, here's the edge. These double-sided cardboards, they, they end up fairly chunky. Even for being, even at the edge, if it's only an eighth of an inch thick, in the center, they've got some heft to them. So, I like to do the, the, these two sides are straight lines, and these two sides are gentle curves. So these are, these are a lot of fun to trim. <laughs> I have not trimmed one on camera in a long time, so bear with me. I'll have to talk myself through it. But we'll see what happens. Let's see here. There's some space for myself first. I use a very long, flexible ruler for this because it lets me kind of press down on both the front and the back, keep it in place. What I'm also going to do, also going to do, that's a hell of a good question. Philippe, give me a second and I'll answer that. I'm going to take some low tack masking tape. I'm going to tape in the margin. So I'm not taping. I'm not taping inside my actual final margin. I'm taping outside of that because even with low tack tape on Batero, you can lift the finish on this if you're not careful. So you want to. You want to avoid putting any kind of adhesive or any kind of tape that you're going to peel off on the leather. Because it, I, it is rare when it happens, but it does happen from time to time. So this here is mostly just going to be to hold this in place a little bit. Hmm. Oh, on that. When I say eyeballing, I'm not exactly eyeballing it. I do have, you remember from earlier on, I do have guidelines traced on this with my scratch all. They're probably too faint to show up on the camera, but I can see where the line is. So I do have a line scratched on this showing me where the margin needs to be. There. There we go. So that here's what the purpose of that black in the center was. You can kind of see how that makes that nice black stripe down the side there. That's that's what that all was for there. That's the only purpose of that black piece. That's why we were able to use kind of a junky, soft belly kind of piece there. That's all it does. Let's do the other side now. It gets a little more complicated as you're doing this because you start losing places to tape it down to. That there, so we're going Here. So now we have the two straight side edges done. That looks pretty smart. Let's see here. How, how close did I get to actually? That's pretty good. I came, came in a little... I got a little bit of a trapezoidal shape on that. I don't know how. But it won't matter. Only I would ever see it. Let's do, now I'm going to do this here. This is done freehand. There's no straight edge for this curve. And I like to do these in multiple cuts. I like to do a shallow, almost kind of a scoring cut across the top, and I find that, that just kind of helps guide the blade a little bit. I'm going to try not to cover this with my head. Yeah. Put a piece of leather under it just to kind of help it more stable, a little more flat under there. So with that there, that gives me kind of a good guideline to follow there. I should be able to make it with one cut now. Like the way that looks. Same for the bottom. A basic scoring cut there.
open that up a little bit more. That's about halfway through. Should be able to finish it with this cut. Now, anytime you're doing multiple cuts, you'll almost always need to clean it up a little bit afterwards, but that's what the planer will be for. There we go. There's our basic shape of the wallet. I think that turned out pretty dang nice. We have two card slots on each side. No opening on the top, just nice, nice, dense, solid feeling card wallet. Again, the edge is only about an eighth of an inch thick. Let's go ahead and do the corners. These are the My Leather Tool corner punches. I do a smaller radius on the top than I do on the bottom just because I think it looks a little more attractive. Top done. Again, you'll remember early on when I talked about cutting those notches out for guidelines, how they would get eliminated when we did this. Any evidence at all of those little notches that were up there are now completely gone. And we got what we needed out of it. If you look at the edges, you can how much you can see. Yeah, you actually can. You can see, look at my fingertips there. Even though we can only see one side at a time, all we need to do to get those lined up, the only step we took to ensure alignment of those was just those two little little notches on the top. That's it. That's all it took. Didn't need anything more than that. No measuring. Not, nothing. There was no thought to that at all. And you'll notice at no point did I measure any of this. I only used straight edges. All of my guidelines, everything I need is all built into these templates that I built. These I designed myself. I just use Inkscape. I design them in a vector format. And after I test them a little bit, I print them out of cardstock first. And once I say, yep, this design's good, I have them done in acrylic, transparent, so I can lay it over top of it and see through it. Emma, there actually is a tour of my workshop on my YouTube channel already. So again, doing the corners, I use a larger radius for the bottom. Purely aesthetic, no, no reason other than that, I just like the way it looks. Had to lift up a little bit on us there. There. These are the My Leather Tool small corner punches. These are available on Etsy. I think they're about 150 bucks. They're worth it. They're absolutely worth it. Don't try to drive these with a mall. They're hand use only, but um, they are worth every single penny. They come very sharp, and they need very, very little maintenance. They're very, very good. So that's, that's it. I think I'm probably going to call the stream here. I've got a couple things I need to do. I'm going to try to finish this up today. Like I said, I'll post pictures of this on my Instagram. Just same as my YouTube channel, Dreadnought Leather. If you don't follow me there, please do take a look at it. Uh, Again, these will be available on a made-to-order basis uh, soon-ish. I'm hoping at the end of the month I, I can get enough made. But um, again, if you enjoyed this, uh, I'd love to hear more about it. I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Feel free to message me on Instagram or send me an email, dreadnoughtleather at gmail.com. Things you would like to see, things you would, uh, you know, questions, things like that. If I didn't, if you asked a question and I didn't answer it this time, I apologize. Uh, just kind of focusing on, on what I'm doing here. But um, I do appreciate the questions, and I, I'm glad that uh, so many of you joined me. Thank you very much. This was a real treat. I'm looking forward to doing more of this. Again, like I said, right now, I'm kind of thinking of Mondays at noon. It seemed like a good a time as any. Um, once a week seems fun. So let me know what you think. Like I said, there's plenty of ways to reach out to me. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you very much for coming, and I, I hope to see you guys again soon.